You know, if you put it on a scorecard, you've probably lost more than you've won. But the wins that you have notched make it worth it. And if you think about it, it's worth it not because you won. It's worth it because you found a way to win after you lost. See, success is not based on wins. Success is based on wins and losses. And today on The Sales Life, I'm going to show you why the wins and losses complement one another and why you need both. If you're tired of settling, then you better get to selling. Welcome to another edition of The Sales Life. I'm your host, Marsh Bice. And if this is your first time here, my intent is to get you in and get you out so that you can get on with your life. And if you've been here time or 10, welcome back. I'm so grateful that you're here. So let's rock out with today's episode, episode 661. And today's episode both come from the inspiration of Tony Robbins' book, Money Master the Game. It's a big ass book. And I've had it on my shelf for years. And I finally mustered up the strength to uh, say, you know what, I'm going to read it. And some of the reason why I didn't read it before was because it had so much investment language in it. And it was so foreign to me hearing these things that I, I really kind of got overwhelmed. And I was like, eh, I don't know. And so I just got away from it. But you know, I think sometimes books are seasons in your life and sometimes you'll grab a book and maybe you'll read it and the way you interpret it during that season is going to be different than say if you read it four or five years later because your seasons change and your interpretation may be different. And I find that quite often. But sometimes too, you'll buy a book thinking you're ready for that season. I think the book came out in 2014. And so I bought it. I just wasn't ready for it. I wasn't in that season to receive it. So don't get disheartened that your heart's not in it. and You're not good enough or anything like that. Sometimes, man, you just got to put a book back on the shelf and come back around to it later. I mean, behind me, those of you who are watching on video, it over here on the side um, are tons of books. Some of them I've read. And some of them I haven't gotten around to, but they're there. That's the big thing. They're there. So whenever I'm ready and it grabs me or I hear about it and I say, you know what? I think I have that book. I'm going to check it out. Episode 662, which is where we are today, is uh, the last chapter of Tony Robbins' book. And I would have never thought the context for this story in this episode would have come from this book. But it did. And that's what I'm always curious and intrigued about life because there's nuggets, diamonds all around different, different corners. So the, the, uh, the book ends with uh, Robin's telling of a Twilight Zone movie that he had watched. I'm 48, so those of you who are in your 40s, you probably remember the Twilight Zone. And the Twilight Zone was really strange. It always had some sort of weird twist at the end. It's kind of creepy. It was black and white. And they always went into a direction that you weren't really expecting. So Robbins tells of a story of a gambler who passed away. And when he opened his eyes in the afterlife, there was a butler standing beside his bed, ready to take him to a lavish casino. <laughs> and so he takes the gambler to the casino, ushers him to his suite. And the suite, man, is, is filled with opulence. It's the custom-made suits are in the closet, drawers full of cash. He had everything that he wanted. And when he puts on his custom-made suit, he goes down to the casino floor, and he walks in like he's a celebrity. Everybody knows him. He's got a pocket full of cash. 
and drinks and women and steaks. No is not an option. And so he sits down at the blackjack table, places his bet. Boom, 21, blackjack. Winner. All right, tonight's my lucky night. So the gambler plays again. Winner. Plays again. Winner. Plays again. Winner. I mean, every time. Win. Hit me. Winner. And he just can't believe it. He's like, oh, my God, this is, this is everything. So then he decides to try his luck on the dice table. So he goes and plays craps. Winner. Every time he rolls, he's a winner. And he just can't believe his luck. He plays his little heart out, goes to bed, comes back downstairs the next day. Same thing. The next day, same thing. The next day, same thing. The next day, same thing. Well, this isn't getting fun anymore. He, he wins every time. And this goes on for months. He's got all the money in the world. He can eat. He's got his choice of women. He's a celebrity downstairs. He wins. I mean, what more could you ask for? And he's increasingly frustrated. He calls for the head angel. And he tells the head angel, he says, I'm not deserving of all this. I, I mean, the, the sweet, the unlimited food and drinks and women, and, and, and I win every single time. I'm not deserving of this. I don't deserve to be in heaven. And the head angel looks at him and says, what makes you think this is heaven? Hell is getting everything that you want. You need the compliments of wins and losses. Doesn't sound right, does it? But when you hear a story like that, it really puts it into context. See, you need the wins and the losses because the wins help push you through the losses. But the losses make you appreciate the wins. I mean, if you went out and you played a football game and you won every single time, it would get boring. It really would. If in sales, every customer that I touch base with bought from me, initially, it'd be like the best thing in the world. But see, when you're not losing, then you've lost your challenge. And the adversity and the outcomes is what gives you strength. See, it's the uncertainty. I, I don't know how this is going to play out. That's what gives you strength. It's the things that rattle you, that blindside you, the certainty that you step forward with knowing it was going to work and it blew up in your face. That's what gives you strength. It's the challenges that develop you mentally, physically, and emotionally. So you need the wins and the losses. And some more so than others. Hate to tell you, sometimes, man, you need to lose more than you win. You do. It's not a 50-50. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not supposed to be. And as I said from the get-go, if you just notched it on a scorecard, you've probably lost more than you've won. But you don't really remember those so much so. Because the wins are what carry you through. There are so many intangibles, so many depths to the wins. And they just seem to connect. That one win ends up with like 7,000 different experiences. But also those five losses created the platform needed for you to win. This is why I say it's a source of your success. If you want to succeed, then it's a complement of both wins and losses. So I've got five different compliments I want to break down for you to really put it in perspective, depending where you are. If you're winning, I want you to look for some losses. And if you're losing, 
Don't get disheartened. Don't get bogged down. Because there's some wins in there too. And you've got to understand it's the yin and the yang. It's the light and the dark. The light needs the dark. The dark needs the light. One doesn't exist without the other, right? So you've got to have these things. And I want to really, really stress this because sometimes you look on social media and you think it's all a bunch of winners. No, you just see some of the wins. But playing your game is going to be a mixture of both the wins and the losses. So the first one, the wins give you proof of work. The losses give you a need for growth. See, the wins give you a proof of work. It's an echo of your investment. And sometimes there's small echoes, small claps from life, small winks from life saying you're on the right track. So it's a proof of what you're doing is working. But the losses complement your proof of work because the losses show you a need for growth. Life's not a recipe. Life is a formula. And the formula will sometimes change. One minute it works and the next minute it shakes you up. It blows up. It happens all the time. The reason why I named this podcast The Sales Life is because sales is the only profession that mirrors life. One minute you're on top of the world, humming right along, and the next minute the world's rolling back on you. It happens like that. So when you're losing, it's a signal from life that it's a need for growth, that maybe you've gotten complacent. Maybe you need to level up. And the things that make you press are the losses. The second way that wins and losses complement one another. Wins create margin. Losses create deficits. You need both. You need the pluses and the minuses. They create margin. And margin in business is the padding, the profit. And when you make more profit, then you could do more, have more, be more right? You can expand. And many times when we win, we don't push for expansion. We push to live the same. And that's not what the wins are for. The wins are actually for accumulation. They give you a little bit of breathing room. So you're not always in the red. But as you do that, you have to stack the wins up. Because as the compliment says, there's going to be a deficit. There's going to be a dry season. And the deficits are needed too. Because this is what creates a little bit of scarcity for you. You don't need a world full of abundance. You need some scarcity in your life too. This is what creates the agitation. It's a good thing you're pissed off. I had a salesman tell me, man, I'm, I'm sorry that you know, I lost my shit the other day. I'm like, man, I'm glad you did. It shows that you care. It shows that it bothers you. It shows that you're not satisfied. I'm good with that. So good that you're pissed off. Good that it's a little bit of agitation. If you're just okay with that, man, that's not a good, that's not a good look. That's not a good feel. So the agitation, the scarcity that you have in this, it's a very good thing because it causes you to analyze your techniques. Maybe I need to adjust my techniques. Maybe they just need a little bit of tweaking. Maybe I need to go back to the basics. It's always about the basics, but sometimes we get away from the most elementary, fundamental things. We get away from those things because there's too much margin. See, creating too much margin is like an odorless gas. It's like carbon monoxide that just puts you to sleep. Your doors of growth are closed, and you're sitting there with the engine of success running, and off you doze, you're out of there. So the compliments of wins and losses, you need the margins, but you also need the deficits as well. Let's move on. Number three, the wins. Actually, I'm going to flip this too. The losses make you look internally. But the wins 
make you give externally. So let's start with the losses on this one. Keep you on your toes. The losses make you look internally. When you're losing, you could blame. That ain't going to get you nowhere. Or you can take ownership. And the losses are what make you become accountable. In a strange way, the losses are what set you up for the wins. That's why they complement one another. So that you can give externally. Like in 2017, I was losing. I was broke. I was bottomed out in life. I was dark, demoted. I was going through a lot. But it was during the losses that I came out with the sales life. October 3rd, got an anniversary coming up, 2017. And it was in that, when I was losing, I actually started contributing. This is why I say the losses give you purpose. I found my purpose in the darkest times. Weird. You think you're going to find your purpose when you're winning. No. Many times you're going to find your purpose when you're at your lowest, when you're losing. And because I contributed, that's what set me up. To give even more when you're losing and you look internally and you take ownership and you say, what can I give? All I had to give, I couldn't give anything monetarily. All I had to give was myself. I didn't have anything else. So I gave of myself five minutes every day on a podcast that was free in my closet on my cell phone. I gave, and that's what set me up for the wins. As I contributed out of lack, that's when I began to be able to give even more and more and more. As you do, you give more to your customers. You give more to your students. You give more to society. You give more to your family. The wins complement the losses. This is your source of success. So the fourth way, losses and wins complement one another. Losses forge your faith. Wins create your confidence. Losses forge your faith because faith is not being able to see or touch the result that you'd like to have. Yet you still make the effort and take action in spite of. Hoping that it comes about. See, hope is not a strategy, but it is a key ingredient. And mixed with hope and stepping with faith is what creates the results that will change your life. Now, as the losses forge your faith, the wins, it creates your confidence. See, your your confidence is slightly incremental when you're winning. But I think it's really amplified when you learn to win again. You push through the losses and you come out and you say, oh my God, that worked. And what you thought was going to be a loss, what you thought they were going to say no, what you thought would not work. You try it, faith, and you stand a little taller and you walk a little more sure about yourself and you take on the next thing. This is so key. Wins and losses, losses and wins. They need one another. So don't shun the losses. Don't resist them. Welcome them because there's so many levels and there's so many lessons and so much experience that you're getting from these things. The last one, let's bring it home with this one. The losses humble you, and the wins on the heels of losses make you more grateful. It's important, man. You need to get kicked in the nuts from time to time and get brought to your knees. I'm so glad that happened to me. 
got buckled, got run over. But damn it, I got back up. I got back up for, because of faith. And when I got back up and stepped out in faith and came out the other side, it created confidence. It also makes me more grateful. Dude, you know, every morning when I walk, I walk my dogs at like 5.30 in the morning. And I walk with a cup of coffee. And I'm grateful of where I'm at today. Really am. I just say thank you that I have purpose. Sales life has given me purpose. The wins and the losses, and more so the losses, is what created wins. I'm grateful for the losses that I've taken. I don't like them. I know you don't like them. They're not the best feeling in the world. They make you doubt. You lose people along the way. Sometimes it feels like that it's not going to work. And then it just becomes all worth it in the end, right? So don't get bogged down because you're losing. Just reference back to this list. And which one of the losses are you taking on right now? And what's the compliment to it? Because there is a yang to that yin. There's a light to that dark. And sometimes what looks dark, you think it's dark, which is a loss. And it's actually a light because it could be saving you from something that you thought you wanted. And it's not the right time. And it may be a decade from now and you realize, I'm glad I didn't win that, that round. You can't go through life undefeated. We all know that. But you can't go through life defeated either. Unless you quit to make it so. But if you keep playing the game, you get your yin and your yang. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I like that. <laughs> so appreciate the wins, but also be bold enough to look for your losses because these are game-changing opportunities for you. We're in times right now, man, that are just so rich for the opportunities and there's no gatekeepers. Appreciate the wins. Look for another loss. Rinse and repeat infinite times until you, the clock runs out in your life and there's no more game to play but until then keep rocking so let me know how your progress is going i'd love to hear from you marshbice.com is the main hub where you can find me and you'll find 662 episodes that you can go through and uh, find something that is relevant to your season in the top right hand corner you'll see all the socials where I hang out. You'll also see the, the podcast in video form right there on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you there. And in the bottom right-hand corner is a microphone. I would love to hear from you. Just push the microphone and leave me a message. I want to know what's going on in your life. So that's Marsh Bice, B-U-I-C-E. It's spelled like juice with a B in front. Somehow it's pronounced Bice. Also, would you recommend today's episode to someone else? This will help show your support, show you love, and also help grow the show because I can't do it without you. All it takes is a spark to create a bonfire of success. So with that, remember the greatest sale that you will ever make is to sell you on you because you're more than enough. Stay amazing. Stay in the sales life.